Welcome to Bods Mayhem Out. Your source for all hard rock, heavy metal, new metal, alternative, punk, horror punk, hardcore, rock, and all local bands with your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bodfather. This is Ryan from American Grimm, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. The views and opinions of the guests do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Bod's Mayhem Radio Network, its staff, affiliates, or sponsors. Parental discretion is advised. Welcome to Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Hey everybody, welcome to Bod's Mayhem Hour. I'm your host, John the Bod, a.k.a. The Bod Father, and as always, I bring you guys and gals awesome interviews. Today, it's an honor and a privilege to have Ryan Grimm. He's the vocalist of American Grimm. American Grimm will release their new album, Ultra Black, via E1 out November 1st. American Grimm has released their new single, Nightmare, which is out now. Also, the music video for Nightmare has passed half a million views on YouTube. And I want to say this right now. Me and Ryan was just talking about this. This band, to me, is in the top ten of the new bands that are out right now. And they are one of these bands that metal needs, and it's in good hands right now. So these guys are on the lookout, plus Like Machines. They're another good band. So if you get a chance, please, please check out this band and all these other new bands because... Like, like I said previously, Ryan, I think Metal's in, in good hands right now, so thanks for coming on the show, and uh, man, welcome to it, dude. Hey, John, thanks for having me, man. I uh, really appreciate it. Let's jump right into this. How's it been working with Adam Splitter, PR, and E1 so far for you guys? Well, you know, we basically just started doing this. We put out the song just uh, about two weeks ago, so this is all kind of new for us, but so far, you know, we're making more waves than we've ever had before. So we're just really excited about what's happening with all the plays on YouTube and Spotify going up. We're just really excited right now. It blows my mind that the Nightmare video on YouTube has surpassed a half a million likes. And I have been doing Bod's Mayhem now for eight years, and I could post a video and it don't get like 10, 15 <laughs> likes. And I'm like, what am I doing? <laughs> So yeah, man, it's it's really cool to see the plays go up. You know, when we first dropped the song, we were all huddled around the computer just watching the plays come in so fast, and yeah. it's really been uh, it's really been rewarding to see it happen. And you know, the funny thing about the nightmare song is that was actually the first song we wrote going into writing the second album. So we always felt like that song was going to be a single, but we just weren't sure. So we just spent another about a year and a half writing and writing, and we always had that song on the back burner. So to release it to the world and see everybody responding and, and, and watching it, it's just it's such a cool feeling. That was going to be my next question. Are there any songs on this new album that are leftovers? And I don't, and I, and I don't mean it in a bad way. I just mean they're leftover songs that didn't make the previous album. No. Like everything on this new album has been uh, made – it was written after basically a year and a half of just straight touring. So basically we made our first album. Um, we had this producer DJ from Venezuela live in Hillsboro, New Jersey with us, where we basically just wrote all these songs within that period of time with him. And then we went out toward the country, saw what was going on in rock and came home and just started fresh and, when I tell you we must have wrote about 70 songs, I'm not even kidding. We just wrote an endless amount of songs and then just picked the ones that we felt best represented us on this new album. This is American Grimm's new album entitled Ultra Black. So in today's music world, Ryan, some bands only put out an EP or album, then they're done. You know that just as well as I do. How does it feel to still be able to put out an album uh, especially the way things are today in the music industry and the music scene? I mean, I feel lucky. I feel lucky that I was given the opportunity to be almost forced to put out another album, full-length album, you know, being signed to the label, you know, it, the choice, it, it wasn't really much of a choice. It was make a, make a full-length album. So it forced us to write a lot of songs. You know, we knew we were going to put out a, a full a full length. So it wasn't like, oh, let's just make an EP. I think this song's good enough for now. It was, we need 
you know, a full length. So let's just write, write, write. And I don't know if we would have wrote that many songs if we didn't have the idea in mind that we were going to make a full length album. So, you know, I kind of have to credit the label for, you know, giving us the chance to put out another full length and uh, do it because without being signed right now, I don't know if it would have forced us to do it. Are you guys comfortable in putting out an EP or would you rather have that full length album possibly? Well, you know, to put out an EP, it's so much easier. It's it's, it's obviously, you know, a, a handful of songs. So I think it's a lot less pressure just to put out an EP because you can always just put out another EP, you know, a couple months later. Mm-hmm. But when you put out a, a full length album, it's a statement. And I think that also made this whole process more exciting, knowing that, you know, this is going to be another full length album that really represents ourselves and our music. What's impressed or excited you the most, Ryan, about making the album Ultra Black, if anything? Is there anything that stands out for you possibly about this album? I think the main thing was after touring, just seeing the rock industry. And, you know, we're, we're a bunch of guys that grew up going to metal shows and, and hardcore shows our whole life. So to be able to go back into the studio after our first album and just try to make a better you know, rock album was just the key to this. Like that's what excited us is to get in there and just try to outdo ourselves. And, you know, we saw where rock, we saw what the other bands were doing when we were on the road. And it was just exciting to get back in the studio and try to create something new and fresh. How long did it take to rot and complete the album for you guys? You know, it took us longer than expected. Um, I would say close to two years for all of our fans that did support us the first time around and saw us, you know, in concert on the first leg of tours when we first started, it's been quite, quite some time since we, you know, came back to those cities and whatnot, because it really did take us a little bit to write this album, but I think it needed to take some time. I think we had to really evaluate what we did the first time around and make these songs better. And, you know, it's just one of those things where sometimes things take a second to get it right. Yeah, exactly, man. And, you know, as music fans, we can tell if it's been rushed. And that's not, in you know, knocking the band or anything like that, but we can tell when there was effort put into that album, you know? Oh, yeah, you can hear it right away. You know, one thing that we take a lot of pride in on this album coming out is we really feel like the songs don't all sound the same. You know, um, one of the responses that we're hoping for is that people say, wow, every song sounds different because that was something that we were really focusing on. We didn't want to put out, you know, an album that you've already heard another band do or something that maybe sounded like our first album. We feel like we kind of reinvented ourselves on this one. And uh, I really think that every song sounds different because of how much time we put in into writing this album. An album should take you on a roller coaster ride, pretty much, if that makes sense. There should be peaks and valleys through it. I agree. Any tracks standing out more to you than any right now on the album? I know it must change every time you listen to it, and I know you're very close to these songs, but do you have any that stand out possibly for you, man? You know, I would say one of the songs that we're all really excited for the world to hear is the title track, Ultra Black. I think it's one of the darker songs of the album, and it kind of brings us over into other genres as well. I think if if there's ever a chance for this band to, uh, you know, I'm not even going to tell you what genre it would be because I'm not even quite sure, but it, it has other elements to it. And it's a song that we wrote and we just felt like, wow, this is something really different. And uh, I, I, we're just really excited for uh, the world to hear the song Ultra Black itself. But that's good that you're not staying in that box. You're not being secluded. You're you're breaking the wall down and, and, and stepping outside of that box and pushing yourself. Do you feel like this album has pushed you guys outside that box than the previous album or no? Oh, yeah. I feel like just every time, you know, you get in the studio and you keep writing, you're pushing yourself as an artist, and that's what it's really all about. Like, I'm excited to write the next album. Like, (laughs) I feel like the next album is going to be even better. Like, you know, we have a studio. Um, Our guitar player, Mike Morello, was the producer on this album. And, uh, you know, having the ability just to – be in your own studio and just write and record and write and record. It, it's endless, you know, and I think that's really important, especially with technology and where it's at today. It's a, it's a big part of being a band is having the ability to create nonstop. 
Was it hard to choose between the current set of songs? Which one would be the first single or video you wanted to release or push first? Or was it hands down nightmare for you guys? Or did you actually have to have somebody come in, you know, come in from the outside to help out? Oh, uh, we had no idea. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> you know, basically the, the, the thing about this band is, you know, we're recording the songs at Mike's house because he has the studio and he's, the engineer he knows all this stuff and then when it comes to the visuals i create all the music videos and do all that so we've basically just been making uh videos and writing and 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 doing all this stuff so we almost needed that outside perspective to tell us like okay like this is what we should do and we were totally okay with it because we liked all the songs equally so we basically knew these were going to be the songs that we wanted to to use out of everything that we created and then we were okay with uh, our team kind of saying, I think this would work best. And, you know, we, we love all the songs. We love the whole album. So whatever everybody wanted to go with, we, we were happy to go with as well. What do you hope everyone takes away from the single Nightmare or message you hope to hear while listening to or any of American Grimm's music in general? What do you hope to get from all this? You know, I just want, I want to inspire, you know, uh, musicians and, and the kids that are playing right now that, you know, being in a band is still a thing, you know, there's a lot of guitars, obviously, in our sound, and listening to a lot of popular music right now, you know, it's like there's a lot, there's not as much guitars going on, and, you know, anybody that really looks into us to know that we're producing the album ourselves and, and making all the videos, I just think it's a powerful thing, and it just shows the future of where this industry is headed and how uh, you can do so much on your own if you just believe in it. Do you guys like to have that uh, DIY, you know, do it yourself, creative, you know, when you want to do it versus having somebody outside, like a producer, things like that, or would you eventually go down that road? You know, it's one of those things because when you're given the opportunity to work with someone that either inspired you or you looked up to, it's hard to say no. But at the same time, you know, when, when, when we released Nightmare and seeing all the play that Nightmare's getting and knowing that we created that and we've been sitting on that song for over two years and just knowing now that the world does like it, it it's a feeling that you're not going to get if somebody else makes something for you. And I just think that you, that, that's, the, that's the balance. That's the thing that you're going to have to choose as an artist is do you want, can someone create the vision that's in your head and a lot of the times the answer is no mike morello produced the album did he get something out of you guys that maybe somebody else may not have gotten i mean do you, you know this is mike the producer versus mike the you know bandmate <laughs> let's talk about that side of it 100 percent. i honestly believe that if we would have worked with anyone else we would have had a different album i think mike has he's a, he's a he's a great mind he can see things even through through an outside perspective even though he he is in the band um i think as a vocalist i think he knows my voice better than anyone else and i think he can get the the most out of me and i just think that uh having the power to do it yourselves man it, it just it, it it brings a chemistry it brings a certain chemistry to the team that you're not going to get it and 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 we're open to working with you know, engineers later on down the line. But right now, I just think if we would have done this any other way, I think we would have had a different sound. And I think we would have choose different songs. And we, in result, have a different album here. Yeah, I mean, think about it. I mean, you got over a half a million views on Nightmare. If that shit ain't broke, don't fix it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, you know, I mean, this is all a surprise to us. Like, obviously, we believe in ourselves, but we weren't really sure what was going to happen. Oh, sure, know? yeah, so, yeah, for sure. <laughs> now, what about the artwork? Did you guys also do the artwork for the album? No, no, none of us. That's one thing. Like, if you give us a, a pencil or a pen to draw something, it, 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 <laughs> it's next to horrible. So that's the one thing. Is there any thing like when it comes to artwork and you know t-shirts and merchandise that's where we like to find people that that maybe the world doesn't know about and for through the first album we had uh this kid tyler do it and he did a phenomenal job he actually had it if anybody sees the first album it's a really cool detailed piece that you'd have to see i couldn't i couldn't explain it um but it's really cool and it was actually a work he previously created and we came across it and just thought it was gorgeous and we wound up using it for the um, 
for the first album. And now this album, another artist that we just came across on the internet, not a real big name. Not sure if he's really done anything established, but his name's Davey. And uh, man, we, this kid just knocked it out of the park. park. Everything this kid touches is amazing. His name's Davey Brown, if anybody wants to check his work out. But uh, yeah, man, you know, when it comes to finding artists, I, I get great pleasure just going on Google and just typing in, you know, graphic design and on Instagram tags and looking up different people that nobody knows about. And it's just, it's fun, you know? What about the songs that were written on this album? Do you guys have any that may be on the upcoming, the, the next album down the road possibly or no? Oh, yeah. I mean, we have so many songs that we didn't use on this album. But at the same time, again, like writing every day is right. the key. So right, 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 right. When, when the time comes to put, up, put out this next album, we're going to spend endless hours in the studio just writing and starting from scratch. And then if we go back to old ideas, maybe we'll bring them up and, and rework them a little bit. But I really feel like, you know, you got to keep writing. That's how you're going to really develop a sound. Just endless writing. Do you see this band still musically growing from where it started? Is is this the sound that you you are comfortable with, or you guys haven't even scratched the surface? And has it just been more of a personal growth for you guys, also? Well, I think one thing is that when we wrote that first album, we never toured before, and touring develops the band in a different way because you play every night together and. You just got a different thing going on. So, like, I really recommend bands in general that haven't torn to just get out there and just try to tour for as long as you can because I really do believe it, it improves the band, even when it comes to writing, believe it or not, because you see firsthand how people respond to certain parts of the songs and, and, and so on. So I think when it comes to when, when the listeners are checking out Ultra Blast for the first time, they're definitely going to hear something that they didn't hear through our first album, Freak Show. Freak Show was just, we called it Freak Show because it was just a crazy different styles of genres. We were really finding ourselves. And I believe with Ultra Black, we really fine-tuned our sound, our direction. And that's what you're really going to hear. For any fans that, that do own Freak Show, they're going to buy Ultra Black. And the first thing they're going to hear is a little bit more of a cohesive sound. In your own opinion, what does American Grimm bring to the table for music that's not out there as of right now? I know no one's reinventing the wheel, but what are you guys adding to that wheel? You know, that's, that's a good question. I think sonically, there's, it, it's a little hard to say because there's so much music out there and everyone's going to hear it, hear it and, and have their own opinion and have their own ideas about it. But I think when it comes to seeing us play together and, and the live show is where you're really going to understand what we're all about. You know, we're three guys that we've been playing together since 2005. We, we all live in the same town in Hillsborough, New Jersey, and we just never gave up, man. And I think um, it translates live the best. So that's going to be the main thing is that when you come out to the show, you're going to see something that I, I think a lot of bands don't have, and, it, and it's the chemistry. When you're coming into the recording studio, do you like to do anything differently during the writing and recording process? And I know that's two different concepts to help keep your mind fresh and open to not get bored or get stale with it. Do you do anything that helps you out possibly, Ryan? Absolutely not. Every time I'm like, what the fuck am I about to do? I have no idea. <laughs> you know, and I, and I think that's the best part about owning a studio is <laughs> you can have that happen and not cost you a million bucks. So no, man, you know, we're in the studio every day. You know, I think the only thing that I normally do is pick up a, a cup of coffee before I head in there. But other than that, man, it's always something different. <laughs> what can fans expect at a show from American Grimm who have not got to see you guys live as of yet? What are they going to get when they come to see you? I think, you know, you're expecting a rock show, but I think we bring a hardcore show. I think, you know, there's a lot of energy in our performance. We grew up in playing in hardcore bands, so we put on a hardcore show, but the music just is a little more fine-tuned and uh, polished. So that's the main thing is that it's a very in-your-face type of performance and that's what we personally like doing and i think that's the best part about being in this band and getting on the road is just every night kind of let loose what made you want to become a musician what was that spark for you good sir that said yeah that's what i want to do you know i think it was growing up as a little kid seeing bands like slipknot you know maybe not totally fitting in with all the other kids you know when you're young i kind of had a hard time in school 
you know, sitting, sitting there and just kind of learning in general, it just wasn't really my thing. And, uh, putting on those headphones was, was always my escape. And after that, once I became a teenager, I started going to local hardcore shows and there was just a, there was just a vibe that it kind of felt like, you know, not everybody knew about it. And you kind of have your own thing going on. And then once I got in my first uh, hardcore band being in front of everybody and, it was just something, man, that I could never shake, and I think uh, I think that's what it is, just being up there and, and just doing something that you really feel like you can just let loose. Man. And my whole entire life, I wasn't able to, to let it go. Especially you coming from New Jersey, that's badass because you got to see, I would imagine, some good hardcore shows, and that's where it actually started from. You know, I, I would have loved to have seen some good hardcore bands uh, back in the day like that, especially like Madball. Oh my God! Oh uh, yeah, yeah, dude. man. Like, you know, I saw I saw all these guys. You know, like I started going to hardcore shows. I'm not that old. I just I just started going when I was really young. Like I was the I was one of the younger kids in the crowd at the time. And you know, you know, from you know playing these real small venues. There was a, there was a venue in Boundbrook called Hamilton Street, and I would just hang out there. Didn't even know who was playing. I would just go, and then and then that turned into me working there and then eventually getting my band on all the sh- like you know as many shows as i could and just having that i think i've, I've been playing shows for so long that i think like to, to stop playing shows would just suck <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> it's like taking away your your favorite uh I don't know, video game or something it's like no mom yeah back, mom, mom. <laughs> exactly is there a country that stands out or shocks you that American Grimm gets support from where you're seeing that your music is getting played in? Have you seen any numbers that come in that kind of shock you? Like, wow, I can't believe it's actually getting played there. Dude, when we got the call that we were going to be on serious radio, I felt like, <laughs> a, I don't want to say a dream come true because I have many dreams, but that was definitely a really cool experience. I never felt like I had a real creed or radio type of voice so to, to hear the you know, responding to uh you know our chaos is really cool is there a band on the bucket list that you would like to work tour with or maybe even do one of the old school album splits with if you can choose one man because i know you probably have a lot all right well i mean obviously there's a huge list but last week i saw i went to the slipknot show with volbeat and slipknot and uh there was about, I would say, 17,000 people at the PNC Art Center in New Jersey, and that would be a pretty cool one to play. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I've been a huge Slipknot fan ever since I was a kid, and I'm very proud of the guys of what they've accomplished with this new uh, this new album, and it's, it's by far, man, you could tell the growth and maturity in these guys for sure in this album. Absolutely, man. They're, they're the legends of it, you know? Did you have a go-to album or song that just let you escape when you were younger, or maybe do you have that now, possibly? Yeah, I mean, I have many albums that I reflect on. I think one of the albums that stuck with me as a kid was, uh, I believe it was the sophomore, or maybe it was the first album by Glassjaw, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Silence. That uh, Glassjaw, uh, for me, if you're not familiar with Glassjaw, they're a uh, band from New York, and they just influenced me my whole entire career. And uh, I go back to that album every now and then just to hear it and get influenced and kind of, kind of centers me a little bit, you know, to knowing what I want to accomplish in my life and kind of looking back on my roots. And, you know, there's not that many albums, not that much new stuff out there right now that gives me the feeling that, you know, I once had as a kid growing up. So I like to put on the glass jaw album every now and then and just listen to it and, Kind of gets me, uh, gives me a good feeling, you know. Folks, you want to get out and check out American Grimm's new single called Nightmare. You want to get out and check this out. I'm telling you right now, you will not be disappointed. I'm not saying it just because Ryan's on here. It's a really great, great song. Ultra Black via E1 out November 1st from American Grimm. Get out and check that out. Pick it up as well. Please support these guys. Ryan, my friend, how can folks stay in touch with you all? Buy some merchandise, tour dates, all this when this happens. How can they do that? Guys, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Just type in American Grim. We'll pop right up. And uh, we're going to be announcing tour dates. Right now, it looks like end of 
October, early November. So just check. You can go to AmericanGrimMusic.com or Facebook, all the socials, and just keep up to date with us there. Before I let you go, would you care to do a promo for the show? Of course. This is Ryan from American Grim, and you're listening to Bod's Mayhem Hour. Everybody stick around. We've got some great, great stuff coming up, and you only hear these interviews right here on Bod's Mayhem Hour and Bod's Mayhem Radio Network. Please get out and check out our Facebook page. It has our podcast link, YouTube link, and also soon our Twitch link. And also please go out and subscribe and like our YouTube page. Everything and anything that we do will be going up on the YouTube page and plus our podcast link. So do not give up on us. And also, Ryan, man, I wish you guys nothing but the best of luck. And like I said, you guys are in my top ten of new bands that has metal well taken care of from here on out, I believe, sir. Hey, brother, thank you so much for having me, man. We really appreciate all the help. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.